Hello, everybody. Today, we want to talk about predefined processes inside of pseudocode. Now, you might say, well, what is that? Well, if I'm coding, I have things like store procedures, procedures, functions, methods, all bits of code that have one or more lines of code associated with them. And I can call it by a single name. That's what I want to do with a predefined procedure. I just want to call another group of code that I get from someplace else. Now, that someplace else might be a third-party vendor that's given me access to some of their code so I can interact with them. That other source might be another person on my team. Quite often, I work in teams, and the teams might be small, like two people. They might be large and have a half dozen or a dozen people involved with them. In some companies, you can expect to have teams of 20 or 30 people all working on our project, maybe even more. So it could come from a team member, or it could be something that I wrote, and I just wrote it so it makes easier sense for me to go grab, and it makes easier sense for me to call a single function name or procedure name instead of having to write out a bunch of code. That way I can use it over and over and over again, maybe even on different projects. So let's take a look at how we would do this. Now, let's first look at something that I might do with another vendor. And I'm going to come in here and create just a couple of simple things and say define CCN, short for credit card number. And I'm just going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Not a real credit card number. We all know this. That's fine. And I might even say define CCV, which is that little number on the back of your card. And it's one, two, three. Okay. So if I'm working with an outside vendor, I might have that information. And then I might say something like call verify CC, short for verify credit card. And then I might have to pass in those values. So I'll put in parentheses and I'll say something like CCN for my credit card number and CCV. And that's all I have to do. Now, I might get a value back and I'll say, okay, where did that value back? And store that into a variable. Just say the variable name equals and that. Maybe I just have to call it. It doesn't matter. The call just lets me know, hey, I'm calling this external procedure. Let's look at another way I can do this. I'm going to just delete this out just to kind of make it a little bit simpler for me. And I'm going to say I want to just call another procedure that's predefined someplace else. I'm not going to pass anything into it. And I'm going to specify call say hello. And this is just a procedure that I'm going to say that I've created somewhere else. And so I have to come up with a way to define this. It's predefined, but I'm defining it. So how am I going to do this? Well, after my end, and this is where it's beneficial to have that end inside of my pseudocode. I'm just going to come down here a few lines just so I know that I'm not part of that block. I'm going to say start. Well, that looks familiar, but I'm going to say start, say hello. So, oh, well, wait a second. Now I'm starting something else. It's named. Oh, maybe this is that procedure that I'm calling. Okay. And so inside of say hello, I'm going to do print hello world. Hey, we've seen this before. We know what we're doing. It's just doing a little print statement. But what I've done is by saying start, say hello, and end. And sometimes I'll even come here and say, say hello, just to make sure everyone's on the same page. We know what that end goes with. Because I've given it a name, I can now call it elsewhere. And I can call it once or twice. I can have some code, call it, do some other code, call it again. I could put it inside a loop or an if statement. doesn't matter. This predefined process allows me to use it other places and allows me to be flexible with what I'm doing with my code. This could have been some complicated piece of code that had 20, 30, 100 lines of instructions. And now I get to call it by one name. 
It could have been a really complicated math equation that maybe a scientist I'm working with, they gave it to me. And I don't know what it does, but I know the name of the equation. I can use that so that it makes more sense both to when I'm reading my code to debug it, that is, figure out why it may not be working correctly, as well as other people. And so they understand it and they can read it easier. So those predefined processes, just like in flowcharts, have a lot of uses here in our pseudocode. And we're going to find that when we start converting these things into code, likewise, we're going to see them all over the place and we get them used a lot. In fact, there's a whole section of programming called functional programming that deals with calling these functions. And we go from there from functional programming to object-oriented programming, which has methods and collections of these methods, which are just predefined processes as well. Hopefully you found this series enjoyable. I've got plenty of other series that you can take a look at on the YouTube channel. Everything from coding in different languages like Python, Java, C++, and more, as well as other topics that you can look at, such as software engineering, databases, Microsoft Office, and others. So please feel free to take a look at those as well. Hope you enjoyed this series and hope to see you in some other videos as well too.